welcome back to my channel how you doing hope you're good today i'm going to be talking about how to prepare for your maternity leave on and the maternity allowance that is to say if you already started knows who's coming to the uk and have had a baby before a year in the uk and you are not entitled to the normal full period of maternity leave for basic nine months and you are going to be receiving the maternity allowance from government which is basically about one third of your salary and i'm sure you know that it's not a lot of money however it's something to support you so i'm going to be giving you tips on how to prepare yourself against that period when you're going to be having shortage in salary so you can be able to maximize your time at home with your baby and will not have to necessarily resume work quickly as you would have if you are leaving on your maternity allowance just alone so if you're interested in this to stick to the end of this video and enjoy all right so now you know you're in the uk and you already know probably before you came to the uk that you're pregnant and you will not be entitled to the full pay of maternity um pay based on maternity leave working in the nhs or if you're working with a care home or a private organization whichever case will be but you do know that you're entitled to the maternity allowance and like i mentioned earlier it's just one third of your salary which is not a lot of money so if you're making about 1500 pounds as a registered nurse who's got her pain in the uk and you're not doing any extra shifts you're not doing any nights that's something you'll be able to earn however the maternity allowance 1500 is what you should have been receiving if you are on a full pay or maternity leave Paid by the NHS. However, on the maternity allowance, you will be entitled to just about one third of this amount, which is about five hundred pounds or five hundred and seventy pounds, and or thereabout. So, like I said, this is basically just about house rent and will not serve you a lot. So, how do you prepare for this time when you will be having low salary or income in the month? My first tip is for you to at least know your situation before you arrive and what is obtainable, so you you do not get days as to what you're going to expect or what's going to happen to you. You have to be prepared in your mind. They're going to be receiving about £570 or thereabouts every month from the time you give birth up until nine months. Now, if you're willing to go back to work before the nine months elapses, then this video will not necessarily be what you should be watching. You should just take the amount of time you want off and go back to work. However, if you feel you need more time to stay at home and care for your baby, or probably childcare issues is giving you trouble, so you'd like to maximize your time at home, then you should listen to this video. Now, once you come into the UK, I would advise you to speak to your manager about your situation, about your pregnancy. And when you're still very strong in the early stages of your pregnancy, in your first trimester and your second trimester, I would advise you to do the following. You should register with the bank in your hospital and pick as many bank sheets as possible as you, your body can take and allow you. As many bank sheets as your body is able to um, manage, okay? So every now and then pick bank shifts around and begin to save up this money begin to save up your bank shifts so pick bank shifts that give you bonuses pick bank shifts on the night duty pick bank shifts during the weekends pick bank shifts that have bonuses and if you're able to register soon enough with an agency i'd like you to look for an agency that has a good pay per hour that is to say agencies that pay you at least 30 pounds per hour or 25 pounds per hour there are agencies like that who are looking for nurses so if you are willing and confident in your practice you can look for agencies as such and do your extra shifts with them and then the money to make of these agencies you can actually save them and keep them towards your maternity leave the other thing you can do is to buy the, your maternity need beforehand now that you have the money so little money to have buy things like your pampas if you're going to, not going to breastfeed you buy your baby food every nitty gritty that you need for caring for your baby when your baby comes you should buy them before your baby comes so that you have enough supplies to last you over the period of nine months i mean you know how much your child is going to be so you can be able to predict how many diapers you're going to be um, using with your baby maybe four a day five a day you multiply these by days in weeks and months and you know how much you need to serve you the whole of nine months so you've taken away the cost of diapers already from your um, expenditure during your maternity leave that's a way for you to budget to plan ahead of your maternity leave the other thing you can do is for you to uh, provide extra services if you're a nurse who has skill 
or something, skill sets, making hair, making um, baking, whatever it is, cooking food. These are things that can actually earn you money. You can go ahead and do those things and begin to earn some extra income on the side just to support yourself. Now, why you need to do this is not because you would normally um, have done. I know after giving birth, you will not be able to do these things. So it's right now when you are still pregnant and you are still strong that you can do these things. And if you're somebody who is very resilient and strong, you can actually do these things even after you give birth, when you've had enough customers who have known you, even when you give birth, they can continue to patronize you and from there you can have incomes for yourself. Now, the other thing you can do is to sell things. You look around your environment and see what is sellable and what you can make a little money from sell them and then um, sell things and make money so if you're somebody who is able to do other things like minding children or caring for children if you're not doing any extra thing outside just your work hours you can actually do um care of children for people around and actually be paid stipends now not stipends but normal pay that people get for caring for children and you can earn up to 40 to 50 pounds a week depending on the area where you live okay so you have babysitters you have house minders okay some people are looking for people who, who will take care of their houses for them so if you are willing to do this i mean who are not as if you're going to be a cleaner or whatever you're basically going to be living in the house and you're going to be paid for doing that so you have to look for the options of things that you can do at least before your baby comes okay i know some of these nurses are in a situation where you don't have a place to live especially if you are in a care home and your care home is not providing you accommodation i find a lot of people who are stuck because they have to give birth and they don't have a place to live with their child because you'll be expected to leave that accommodation where your care home has given you or the airbnb where you're living because you're having a baby and you know it may not be very easy to get a house immediately in the uk depending on the support you get from your manager and from the friends around you so being a house sitter is going to be something that's going to work for you because you're going to be living in the house with your baby the owners of the apartments are usually not in the country or they are living outside of the country and um they're looking for somebody to stay in their house so this is something you should look into and especially if you have accommodation problems for yourself against of when you have your baby and i've mentioned about child minding and caring for children you can do this just even if it's just a child part time you can do it every extra income helps you okay so um and why and then when you have your baby ultimately you can decide how long you want to be on maternity leave and based off the savings of what you've made through your bank shifts and extra shifts and agency shifts and probably um child minding that you've done earlier on or through your personal skills that you have done beads making hair sewing clothes cooking you can actually begin a cooking business you little stuff sell food and get money okay it's easy to set up businesses in the uk so you can do this and just be a sole proprietor and make money for yourself don't just yourself be in a tight corner now you know how much you are able to get after your maternity leave so now that you are in the uk make sure you're maximizing every extra hour that you have every time that you have maximize it in doing extra shifts and saving enough money for yourself against when you have your baby and when your baby comes you can take care of your child and know if you're able to go back to work immediately then fine go back to work and and you know more salary but if you feel you need more time to stay with your baby then you need to begin to consider things that you will do as a passive way of making money to supplement the money which you're going to be receiving from government as maternity allowance and like i said this money is only for nine months so if you think you're able to survive on this money with your um hustle on extra hustles then you can stay back and have your time with your baby but if you think you cannot cope ultimately you still have to go back and resume work earlier I mean, at least give yourself enough time to heal and rest. Ultimately, the decision to go back to work is yours. However, you can look for ways to maximize your time with your child and also do this without the stress of not having a lot of income and money during your maternity leave. I do hope this video has added some value to you and just to prepare you for what you should expect and what you should be doing to Put yourself in a good standing and in the right position where your baby arrives. So you're not going through unnecessary maternity um, depression or postpartum depression because of inadequate funds. Okay, and if you have families 
outside of the country who are able to support you all fine and good you really um, need the support you need also do well to interact well with your community and you may find help in places you don't even expect in church your friends your colleagues at work colleagues at work are, are very 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 wonderful so if you have a good rapport with your colleagues at work you'll be surprised how much support you can get from them to push you through your period in maternity leave now, the other thing you can do for example is to save your money apart from saving and doing extra um, pay, doing saving your money off your agency work or extra work in the hospital you can actually save your salary you can save your salary designate a particular amount of your salary after you've paid your rent and your bills and everything ensure you make this savings every month up until the time you give birth the other thing you can do to save this money and ensure it is not spent is to join savings um that we call ajor or i don't know what you call it it's just basically a group of people coming together and saving money every month so you time it such that you get your own money at the nine months when you are going to be having your baby so you have that bulk sum of money to support you which you've been able to save with the help of this group of persons filipinos do this a lot and i hope africans also will be able to imbibe this in nigeria where we come from we do this a lot but i don't know what happened when we come here probably we don't have a lot of people here or probably in your your in your trust um you don't have a lot of people but you can start it up because you know you need it look for people who you think you like and you can trust who are within your community or your color and even because i'm sure no white is going to be interested in this kind of thing so look for somebody who people who will be interested who you know if you speak to them about this thing they will be interested and suggest to them that you guys should do this contribution every month and my advice to you is to ensure that you get your own contribution at the time when you're having your baby so let's say you're saving 300 pounds every month by the time you're having your baby that's nine times 300 pounds that is about 2700 pounds and you've saved already up and that should be able to cover at least rent for a period of time now and that clear i'll give you is towards the time when you'll be going up for maternity leave ensure that you request for night duty and weekend duties before you go on maternity leave because your um pay is going to be increased based off the fact that you have done mad night shifts and weekend shifts just like night shifts and weekend shifts give you more pay in salary it also boosts your maternity allowance or your maternity pay when you go on maternity leave for those who qualify for full pay from their employers but for you who does not um, um, qualify for pay it does not affect your maternity allowance so what you need to do is to save save as much as you can join contributions or start one for yourself and be the last person to collect the contribution um save a particular amount for yourself every month and then do bank shifts and agency shifts do something that you can that is in the form of a handiwork and save money you can be a child minder or a house sitter now the other thing you can do is to rent platforms now this is something i know that comes with a risk but over time i believe that usually a gain of over these investment platforms so you can actually invest like 500 pounds and you can get maybe 100 pounds by the time you are cashing out in nine months time that 100 pounds on top of the money is something you wouldn't have had left the money in your account so you can actually um, bank on that so at least know that this is 500 pounds by the time you're going to be taking it in nine months time will be about 600 pounds or thereabouts and that's something that you can look forward to so i do hope this helps you in your way and yes ensure you do what you can and you must to ensure a proper head state of mind and body and if you know you're not able to cope with this kind of stress already money matters probably you're a very fragile person then i think you should consider having your child before coming to the uk to work however if you think you're able to cope then these are the options that you can have before you come to the uk do that like i said your family can support you before you come and when you come you can actually have all the time you have and be ready to go back to work okay so um I, I do wish you the best and i hope you make the best of the time you have and come back to work when you're ready without any stress or your mental health or your physical health or your mind i do hope this video has added some value to you if you did like this video do give it a thumbs up and i'll see you in my next one thank you for watching bye for now